trust me twice. Kind sir. Welcome to another video. I'm on the Isle of Sky. I came to do big things. Big things didn't happen. I'll get into that later on, but let's just say I've had a mare. To console myself, I'm off to go find somewhere nice and secluded, pitch the tent with some sea views and hopefully get a nice sunset slash sunrise. Mentha aquatica, aka water mint. It's just lovely and fresh. The sea is looking nice, calm and clear. And I'm wishing I brought my diving gear. I don't want to stack a doodle do off there. The call of the void. She's calling me to jump off. No, <laughs> don't even say it. Don't put it into, into reality. Try and get to the end of this outcrop peninsula, whatever you want to call it. Bit of rock. Stunning stuff. Bit of a scramble. It's good though, mate. Took me nearly nine hours to get here. <laughs> 18 hour round trip. And I've goofed. Let's go. Let's keep going. We're right onto the end. Stunsville. Look how clear the water is. Medic! I can't believe it. it's the first time I've seen clear seas in a long time and I don't have my gear with me. These seas are rich with wildlife. In fact, the Isle of Skye is rich with wildlife. Golden eagles, sea eagles, whales. And there we are, we're at the end of Big Broomhandle. Mate, it looks cool. Come back. Wow. There she is. Four season jobby. Because you never know, we're on the Isle of Skye, aren't we? Anything could happen. Best to be safe. Peace of mind, isn't it? Four season. It's not even that heavy. It's like 1.7 kg or something for a four season roomy tent. It's the Terra Nova Laser Compact AS. This thing, mate, this flex tail pump is, it's, it's so light comes with loads of different adapters to inflate inflate on one side deflate on the other you literally just stick it on and that's it that'll just blow that up in like whatever 30 40 seconds whereas normally you'd be giving it all that just for the weight alone it's got a rechargeable battery in it it's a no-brainer it's coming on all my hikes with me now and I'll leave a link below. If you want to get a discount, uh, Flextail have given you guys a discount. I'll leave it here and I'll leave it downstairs if you want to check it out. But I recommend it. You might not be into camping, so why would you want one? But if you're into camping or in blowing up airbeds, if you're into blowing up airbeds, I would recommend one. And there it is. It's that simple. The sleeping bag of... There's so much going on with these gannets and uh, cormorants and seals and all sorts. It must be... There must be a lot of fish in there. It's a shame. Sleeping bag, it's uh, in the Alp kit dry bag. So it's, it's the Rab Neutrino 600 that 
I actually went to Rab, the headquarters at Rab, and helped make this. I blew a load of goose feathers into it. So I'm on that because my Rab has sent 900 that regular viewers will know, my red one, cacked it because I'm doing a van build and there's been a lot of like exposed metal been left and the sleep I've got in my sleeping bag and it's just caught on all this metal and while I've been asleep and without knowing it's just ripped it a new one it's just, it's just torn it to bits without me knowing I've woken up and been like what is got there's feathers everywhere and I just couldn't I couldn't fix it I couldn't just get them all and ram back in I don't know what to do with it so just put it in a box and what's this my big Agnes Rapid SL pillar. Couple of Hadoukens in there and that's job done. There's not much wind. You kind of want the wind to pick up a little bit just to keep the midges at bay. Oh mate. Just watching these dolphins coming round this headland is stunning. <laughs> They're just so many. It's just when you think, oh that's it, they've gone see later. There's a couple more. And you can just see them breaking the water, look. Oh, man. That's special. Also, imagine if I had my diving gear on and I was in there and all them lot turned up. How would I feel? I'd be half of me would be like buzzing. Half of me would be cacking myself. <laughs> and that's how I like to operate. Oh, look at them. You can't see it on here, stupid GoPro, but. <laughs> Be here at my shoulder Be here in my side Be here when the cold night falls and in the morning light Be here in the autumn When all the colors call Be the burning memory Of all the summers gone Be here every morning Be the calm I feel Let's get a bit of bait on Oh mate It's just... Sorry, my energy's a bit off Sorry, is this on? Like fish eye? It's all right, isn't it? Fish eye lens head. I'll tell you why me, uh, why my energy's a bit off, mate. Why my chakras are un unhinged. The ignition on my Soto windmast has gone. Do I brought a lighter as well? Spicy, spicy pasta. I'll have you know. Titan long titanium spoon. You've seen it all before. But you might be the, this might be the first video of mine you're watching, and if so, sorry, because they're normally a little bit better than this, I think. I'm shagged. Energy's a bit shagged. You've got to be careful, mate, because they're so hot. Look at all it. I've used I use this as like a little thingy. And it's it's melted it all onto handle. I only have a little uh, towel. Oh well, it doesn't matter anyway, does it? So yeah, I'm on the Isle of Skye which is eight hours away from Yorkshire, 14 hours away from the south coast of England. Now, I've had the Sky Trail in my, on my radar for a few years now. When I, in fact, before I, before I even did the Cape Wrath Trail, I, was, uh, I had it on my, on my radar, I bought the guidebook and I've been studying it for a long time and all the stars aligned. And so I was like, well, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go up to, to the Isle of Skye and I'm gonna do it. And so I chucked all my stuff in van and headed off and and ever since i've set off mate i'll be honest it's just i've just had a nightmare i made the call today 
to not bother to not set off because of the things that have happened. And let me just tell you what I like, right? This is mad. This is mad. It's oversharing, isn't it? But I don't, you know, hey, some little lammies. Lamb diddlets. Frolicking. So for those of you that know, my van, it's not complete yet, but I've got it to a stage where I can comfortably sleep in it and store all my stuff in it, happy days. And uh, sometimes if I need a piss, I'll, uh, I'll just go in a bottle, as you do. And I'd gone in it, like I'd emptied this five litre bottle of water that I'd bought. When I get caught out pissing this five litre bottle and then just, just stash it nice and safe, it has its little place that it goes. And then on the way up here, I don't know what's happened, but it's, <laughs> I pulled over and I looked down near the fuel cap and it was all like, what I looked like water coming out and I was like, oh no, like the fuel must be leaking. Open the fuel cap, nothing. It's coming out the cab, like it's coming out the back of the van. Open door, just piss everywhere, mate. Absolutely. I mean, I'm gonna have PTSD, piss TSD for the rest of my days on that one because I just like, I, my, oh, the amount of time spent doing van and packing for this trip just to just have piss everywhere. Like the bottle just must have just exploded or something, I don't know. But piss everywhere, so my head went, my head just completely went. All my electrics and camera stuff covered in piss. Um, <laughs> uh, just things that I was using for the Cape, for the things I was going to be using for the Sky Trail, like my maps and that, and clothes and just things like that, just just covered in piss. My other tent covered in piss, <sighs> and. Uh, it just shot me through, like, it shot me through, and I was like, all right, uh. So I got a load of wet wipes from shop and tissue and that, and dried it all up and cleaned it best I could. You know, midges are coming out. Cleaned it best I could, but Ed had gone. Ed had collapsed on itself already with that one. And then, um, and then the forecast just did a 180 on me, and it started pelting it down, <coughs> and it was forecast thunder and lightning and heavy winds for the bit where I was going to be on a, a really exposed section and I just thought, oh, no, I just thought, there's no point, mate, there's no point in parking up this piss. So anyway, Ed just completely caved in then. I was like, well, the weather's done a 180 on me. It's going to be, like, I know like you should be hiking in all weathers and all that, but it is a holiday for me, this, and I want to really enjoy it. You know, I don't want to have to be risking stuff on the top of the ridges when it's lightning and it's really exposed on the Isle of Skye. For those that don't know, there's not many, there's, well, there's hardly any woodland. It's just really open and open to the elements. So, And a few other things happened. I've just been having a run of bad luck. Now too much time has gone and uh, I have other things and other commitments. So I can't even do it. So I just feel like it's been a bit of a wasted journey in that sense, because I was so geared up for it, I thought, you know, I even bought some new socks. I just made the call, I decided, I was like, well, I'm gonna go find somewhere nice, pitch my tent up, because I can't come all the way to Sky and not appreciate a camp. So I've come here to this nab. I've seen dolphins and that, my head is soothed now. I feel loads better, but I just don't have the time to get this hike done that I really wanted to do. It's annoying because it's wasted a lot of petrol and a lot of time. I'll come back, I have to. I've spent so long planning, I will come back and attempt it. If I don't get it done this year, I'll get it done next year or at the end of the season. The midges are out, look. They're getting me. Come and get me, finish me off. Head nets on me, I shan't be beaten. I shan't be, I shan't be bullied into my tent yet. I'm hoping for a decent sunset. It looks like the dolphins are coming back that way. So if I'm quick enough, without falling off edge, obviously, if they're gonna come back round this headland, if I get right onto edge, there's a good chance I might be able to jump up back on one of them. Or one, one foot on each, two get two of them, one foot on each, like off like off something I've seen, but can't remember. Come on, lads. Oh, where though? There they are. 
Look at that. This is it. Dolphin spotting as the sun goes down. <laughs> I'm having it though. Yes. Go on, lads and lasses. Yes. Oh. <laughs> bottle it. I bottled it. Bottled it. Bottled it. Bottled. Bottle nose dolphin it. But they're just sort of, look, breaking the surface. It's stunning. Glorious, glorious creatures. Dolphins going like that when the sun's going down, like little silhouettes. What do you think would happen to me if I put goggles on and got in there? Head butt me probably, wouldn't they? Head butt me into another dimension, I imagine. You hear about them head butting sharks, don't you? And you don't go in to see what this time of night to play with dolphins out here on your own, do you? It's not a thing you do. See you later, lads. Thank you. Look at this, mate. Oh, the lid's just come off it and it's got everywhere on it. Hey, hee <laughs> hee. Lovely little camp spot. Tent performed brilliantly. It's a shame that I've spilled all my water inside, but that's life, in it? And there's two ways you can think about it. And if I'm in a negative mind space, which I have been because of like, I've blown my chance to do this hike, then I could be like, oh, everything's wet, everything's gone wrong again. I've had to use me, uh, me jumper to dry everything up. Now that's soaking wet, boo hoo. Or you could just be like, so what? Shit happens, get on with it. You've got your health. You're in a beautiful part of the world. It's just a mindset, isn't it? Because once you're in, once you're in a negative mindset and you like things start to go wrong, then you lean towards that. So you look it, you look for it in different aspects of life, and then it comes to you. You sort of you project it, and so it comes to you. So that's it. The negative vibes are gone. Things happen. So what? <laughs> Walks over there, trips on guy line, straight off end. <laughs> Right, let's get this tent packed up, mate. There we are. Wonderful. As always, leave no trace. Just a flattened bit of ground. <laughs> yeah, man. Wonderful. Midges are out. I fear that uh, I've left it a bit late for this year because hiking in Scotland during summer, no, I've been a part of that before and it is, it's rough mate. It can drive you insane, <laughs> midges. Quite steep. 
deep here, me urchich. A little wood violet. Edible. Excuse me. All right, spring. How are you doing? <laughs> it's the oyster catchers making a racket. I've said it before, but there's just a waterfall there, right? Just in this farmer's field. And there are things in Scotland that if they're in England, especially the south of it, right? If they're in the south of England, it'd have its own car park, gift shop, and you'd have to pay to see it. In Scotland, it's just in some gadget's field. Or just round every corner you take, like, especially in the Highlands. Here's my sound bite, there's waterfalls that should have their own gift shop round every corner. Clunk click. Oh, got to lift it to put a bit. Not bad. That soothed me noodle right down. Beautiful. Highlight, dolphins, obviously. Look at the cloud enveloping that ridge. I do have some uh, big hikes planned, so stay tuned for that. Look after yourselves and each other as spring just dances by on the hill. <laughs> Bye for now.